This video is going to be a beginner's guide to Dark and Darker so that you can figure out how to play the game and successfully get out and also just know a path of exactly where you should be starting and what you should focus on initially. I would recommend to start out that you play Fighter. Fighter is a really balanced character and while it's not the best character, it is probably the easiest for someone who's just starting to learn. It comes with your first two skills already equipped that you're going to need, which will be Sprint, and that is going to increase your movement speed for 6 seconds, and Second Wind, that will give you 50% of your HP over 12 seconds. This is Second Wind specifically is really useful if you're starting out, because you're going to take hits from PvE and just having this as a crutch to fall back on initially. And also, if you get in any confrontations, it's also useful. Secondly, strictly for the purpose of learning, I would say put on Weapon Mastery first. This way you can start to understand all of the different weapons from all the different classes. Weapon Mastery allows you to use every weapon from all classes, and Fighter's the only character that can do this. That way you can learn the advantages and disadvantages of each weapon, as well as their swing patterns. Weapon Mastery will also allow you to equip a bow, so you can learn how to do long range and short range, as well as switching between the two. You can also use a crossbow as a fighter without the perk, but being able to learn how to use a bow or longbow is going to help you if you want to play ranger down the road, and is also a slightly better weapon for prolonged ranged fights. Keep in mind though that when you do use Weapon Mastery, you'll have a 10% attack power debuff for weapons that a fighter can't naturally use. Before going into any of the team instances, I would say go into Goblin Caves normal. Goblin Caves is a solo instance, and you'll be engaging players and engaging PvE very quickly, and also in a way that's fairly friendly. To a solo player. This way you don't have to deal with too much of team mechanics and you can focus on working on yourself and what you can improve specifically. The first thing to focus on as a new player is how to deal with PvE. Most melee enemies can simply be dealt with by walking into melee range and then walking backwards, baiting out a swing, and then counterattacking. You can increase your success with this by baiting a swing and turning sideways before walking sideways. This gives you less time in the hit zone. You can continually use this method to keep an enemy in the same spot, making it to where you don't corner yourself as much. Being able to deal with PvE is essential to be able to loot properly, and also to have max health for every PvP confrontation you get into. Virtue type enemies are more difficult, but they can be dealt with in a few ways. The first way is you can get into their range of attack, and then bait an attack, turn and press W to walk forward perpendicular to where they're shooting. You can also sidestep, but this method is safer because you cover more distance quickly. If you have a shield, then you can block and aim up to where you're covering your head. Virtures will always aim at your head first. The skeleton archer will aim at your head and then your body if they do two shots, but aiming slightly up with a round shield or heater shield will block both. A more difficult technique is to look at the ground and crouch with control right before they shoot at you. This way, since they're aiming at your head, they will shoot over your head. This is fairly precise, but will allow you to dodge even if you don't have sideways mobility. After using any of these methods to block or dodge an arrow, you can retaliate and get a swing in. You want to do this as soon as you dodge the arrow or block the arrow. If an archer is in a tricky spot, bait it out to a better spot where you have more of an advantage. In general, they always stop at the same distance before trying to shoot at you. So again, you want to bait a shot, block it or dodge it, and then counter swing. Alternatively, you can also use terrain to block their shots. Just remember that they stop at their max range, so use this to your advantage if you have multiple enemies on you. Also, keep in mind that they will be able to break down doors, and they will shoot at you as long as you're stopped within their max range after you open a door and close it on them. If you're overwhelmed, you can try to kite enemies around a room, 
and then open a door and close it once you're on the other side. In general, this will keep you safe from boss type enemies or enemies you simply don't want to fight. Just remember if you stay in attack range, they will break down the doors. The next thing that I would focus on is looting. If you're just starting, you won't understand all of the items right off of the bat, but most of the treasure type items that you find in pots are going to be worth the most gold if you sell them to the collector. Prioritize smaller treasures first, and also prioritize treasures based on their rarity. At level 10, you'll unlock the ability to trade with other players, and you'll slowly gain an understanding of what's worth a lot. I would save all high rarity items in your stash as you go initially, and continually play with bad gear until you learn how to fight and how to do PvE. I won't get into the in-game economy too much right now, but if you find items that have all attributes on them, I would save them as those are generally the best items. Aside from that, prioritize rarity. Rarity from worst to best goes gray, white, green, blue, purple, orange, and then unique. Although finding a purple in normal goblin caves is probably going to be the highest you find, aside from if you do the troll boss potentially. As you're playing, try to keep in mind where you find good loot, since the maps don't change. I would say that memorizing the map is the third priority. Knowing what enemies are where and what terrain you have to work with is really important to surviving. Knowing what different rooms have and how they connect to each other will help you loot and also help you know where to go in general. As you learn the map, you can also memorize the spawn points, and this will make you get caught off guard by other enemies much less frequently. You can also use this to your advantage to spawn rush players at some point. Trust me when I say that knowing your way around will help you significantly when it comes to dealing with PvP. Regarding PvP, sound is a crucial part of the gameplay. If you shift walk or crouch walk, your steps will be quieter, and if you occasionally stop when you think players are nearby, you might be able to hear their footsteps which will allow you to know where they are. Something equally important, or maybe even more important than knowing how to swing, block, and dodge, is to know when you're at a disadvantage or an advantage. A rule of thumb to be able to learn this with experience is, if you were in a situation and you felt like it was unfair, try to force that situation onto your opponents in the future. I'm going to give some general tips now. Any consumables or thrown items can be used by pressing 3 or 4. Pressing each button again will cycle through the items that you have equipped on each of these, and this is where you equip them. This includes potions, campfires, thrown weapons, and torches. You'll always start with two torches no matter what class you are, so if you're in too dark of an environment, you can pull out your torch, but be aware some people will use this to their advantage, and they'll turn off lights in rooms like this in order to make it hard to see them in there. The strategy can be really useful for ambushing people, and it can be really useful to allow you to recover in a safe environment. If you do happen to take damage from an enemy, the entire red portion of your health bar can be recovered by sitting down. Sitting down is also necessary if you want to use a campfire and recover from the campfire. If you need to sit down, I would recommend finding a safe spot, or even making a safe spot by turning off all the burners and lights in a room, and then press G to sit down and wait until your health is recovered. The recovery process is really slow. I'll show you how slowly your health goes up here, but sitting down to recover health if you don't have enough recovery items can increase your chance of survival a lot. If you're a wizard or cleric, then you'll also recover your spells as you sit down. Also, make sure to clear enemies out of the room you sit down in, because enemies can roam and they can aggro on you, and if you're sitting down, they might just find you and get a free hit on you. Another important strategy to note is that when you have your weapons equipped, you have a movement speed penalty from these weapons. Putting away your weapons with the X button will allow you to run a lot faster. This can be very useful if you're trying to run away from an opponent, or if you're trying to chase down an opponent. Just remember, if you're chasing down an opponent by putting your weapon away, make sure that you pull your weapon out if they pull their weapon out and try to fight you. If they already have a weapon out and you're chasing them down, then pull your weapon out when you're just out of attack range so they can't turn on you and start attacking you while you still don't have a weapon. When it comes to PvP, make sure you're always playing to your advantage. 
If you hear an enemy breaking things or distracted with other enemies, then you can shift walk in to catch them by surprise. If you have a bow or range, make sure to use this range for the maximum amount of time possible and don't give up this range. If someone else has range on you, then if you have the option, try to bait them into coming into close range. If you've already done a significant amount of damage to an enemy, then make sure to pursue them and don't give them time to heal. When it comes to actual melee combat, the best thing that you can do is learn the different weapons. You can either do this by playing with them or fighting against them and learning their respective advantages and disadvantages. Don't be too worried about dying or losing or not getting out initially. Just try to learn fighting and learn the game. A lot of this game is just building up knowledge and then using that knowledge to your advantage. In this next confrontation, I use melee while my enemy uses range. I can see that they have the plague to their back, so they probably don't want to run out into the plague. And I can also see on the map that the area they're in will allow me to push and remain fairly close quarters. If you ever need to run down a ranger, make sure to crouch and duck occasionally, and also try to strafe. Just make sure that you are being as hard to hit as you possibly can be as you approach. Also, if they're shooting at you from really far and you don't have range and can't shoot back, just try to walk away or get away from the confrontation and wait for a better confrontation that gives you more of an advantage. The more you play, the more you'll understand the different weapons and the dynamics of PvP, and eventually you'll be able to start getting out with loot. If you last long enough in a match, then blue portals will start appearing. These blue portals can only spawn within the area that's not affected by the plague currently. Just like footsteps, the direction that these blue portals spawn in can be heard. If you find a blue portal, you can walk up to it and interact with it. After a certain amount of time, it will open, and walking into the blue portal will allow you to escape. If you feel like you're safe and you want to get more loot, then at this point I would just start collecting pretty much anything to fill your inventory. Weapons and gear aren't worth that much to the vendors, but in this scenario it's better than nothing. If you see any pots or chests around, then feel free to loot them, but keep in mind that this does make a lot of noise, and sneaky players could be waiting for you or trying to steal your portal. Sometimes players will stand still and try to not make noise in the final zone, waiting to have an advantage so that they can take out whoever else is left. Finally, each of the solo dungeons have an extract point, and this extract point will always open up at some point during the match. From my experience, the majority of the time, it will open up between 4 minutes left in the match and 2 minutes left in the match. Try to recognize this area that I'm in on the map, and also just visually, because this area always has the extract point in normal goblin caves. The extract point is instant to use. All you need to do is walk through the gate once it's open and walk up the stairs. But keep in mind only one person can use this extract point. If you go into it and see that boulders are blocking it, then that means someone has already used the point. A lot of times people won't use this point if it's really deep into the plague. So knowing your way around the map and running to the extract point will oftentimes give you a free escape. It also removes the RNG element of trying to find a portal. Also, like I said earlier, if you're going to get out and you have a lot of inventory space still, you might as well just take whatever you can find. Anything that's not what someone default spawns with is going to be worth something to sell. And here's what the extract point looks like. I already ran by it a couple of times, but you just walk up these stairs, the rocks will fall down, and then you're out. When I was facing the room that had the goblin mage in it and the heal shrine, that was to my back by the way. Also, that room always has a heal shrine. When you do finally get out, you want to sell all of your random treasure to the collector. You can click on the collector from the merchants menu, and then you just click the items you want to sell after you've clicked the sell tab. All of the items that you can sell to the collector can't be used for anything but gaining gold from the collector so don't feel bad by getting rid of any of them. If you have any non-treasure items you want to get rid of, you can go to any of the other merchants and click their sell tab. I think you can sell equipment to all the merchants other than the fortune teller, the surgeon, and the collector. But what's important is you can sell to most of the merchants. 
starting out, if you find anything that you think is good, like I said, I would recommend putting it in your stash, and then waiting until you get to level 10 to sell it to another player. Once you finally have some gold to work with, I would recommend first going to the weaponsmith, and buying gray versions of whichever weapon that you want to test out. Once you figure out a weapon that you like, say you like the falchion, also I would recommend starting with a halberd or a spear, those are easy because they have a lot of range over your opponents. Falchion is also really popular and easy to connect with on your swings because it's a large horizontal swing and has bigger range than the sword looks like it would have. But once you figure out which weapon that you like, then you're just going to go buy as many of the greys as you want. And then store them this way. Each, between each match, you can just go in here and grab another falchion if you lost. And drag and drop it to equip. This falchion is also one-handed, so it can be used with a shield. Another thing that I would recommend if you're a fighter is to have a secondary weapon of a gray longbow. You're going to spend a lot more if you go up to white instead of gray. That's about double the cost usually for a few extra points of damage, which when you're not geared, it's not going to make a huge difference. And also when you're not good yet, it's not going to make a huge difference. Remember to buy some arrows as well. Aside from that, I would say the next priority for your gold when you're trying to max out how much you can do on a budget is to buy these gray potions of healing. They're one third the cost of a white, but they are going to heal the same amount, only it takes five more seconds. Finally, I would say go to the leathersmith and buy some shoes. These are going to grant you a lot of movement speed and there aren't really any downsides to the shoes. They're very cheap as well. Finally, a quick overview of what all the merchants do. The alchemist sells potions and also sells crystal balls, magic staffs, crystal swords, and spell books. The armor is going to sell heavy armors and shields. Fortune teller sells potions of luck. These potions are going to increase all of your loot rarity when you consume them during a match. Goblin Merchant sells randomized rarity items, so I'll buy one just to show you. They're very expensive, and generally they aren't going to be worth as much as they cost. So I got White Longbow, but this can be any rarity, and it can have any rolls on it. The Leathersmith sells leather equipment. Surgeon sells bandages. The tailor sells light clothing. Tavern master sells ale and also sells bard weapons or bard instruments. The collector buys your collectibles, your treasure. The treasure can be used to turn in your silver coins and you can also buy gold purses that will store your gold coins in them. Weaponsmith sells randomized weapons, and the woodsman sells throwing axes, pickaxes, torches, bows, and hunting traps, as well as crossbows and bolts. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully this helps you, and good luck out there.